Hi, I'm Rosie and today's stretch for singers is exploring the lunge. So if you've been on this channel before, you will know that I talk about the body as a whole instrument and how we must consider the whole body as a system if we want to keep a healthy voice and also really feel connected to our voice as our instrument. So why might you consider putting a lunge or some sort of hip release exercise into your vocal warm up? So the hip flexors or particularly the psoas muscle, one of the large hip flexors, this muscle plays a key role in keeping the body upright. Essentially, it helps to attach our upper body and our lower body. So if we do have some tension in these muscles, it really is going to have a knock-on effect on our alignment and our posture. The psoas also has lots of connections, particularly with the 12th rib, therefore um, it is connected to our rib cage. Also some connections with our spine, the transverse abdominus, which is a muscle of exhalation and therefore goes to help to support, support our voice, um, and also the pelvis as well. So again, if we did have a lot of tightness, it's going to have a serious impact on things like our breathing, and therefore it could affect our singing and our speaking. So doing an exercise like a lunge or a hip release is just going to help to free up these muscles. We also hold a lot of emotional tension in our hips, so it can just feel really great to release the muscles. Now there is one key thing to remember when you are doing this exercise, and that is that it's not about flexibility, it is about release. So as soon as you come into a lunge, if you feel this shaking, then that's really not going to help. The psoas muscle is attached to our um, thoracic spine where our spinal cord runs. So if it feels this shaking, our body feels the shaking, we're going to go into our fight or flight mode, which we don't want when we are singing. We want to activate our parasympathetic nervous system and that's going to help us feel released and relaxed. So we want to find gentle release, find a bit of movement. We don't want a static, strong stretch where we are shaking. So coming into a lunge, you could do a high lunge. If you've not got anywhere else, um, you don't want to be touching the floor. You could even hold on. That's not the best example. Something next to you, you could hold on again, just so that you feel that you're not fighting and causing this to be a stressful experience. And it can be quite a short lunge just to feel a bit of stretch in the hip flexor. However, if you've got time and space, I would encourage you to come to a low lunge. So you can come into this low lunge from lots of ways, but let's take it from a forward fold. So come and stand um, with your feet about hip width apart. Fold forward from the hips, rolling down. You can use your fingertips to help support you. Feel strong through the right foot and then step the left foot back. You can then drop the left knee, lift the torso, and bring the hands to the upper thigh. So you can untuck the back foot, and really it's just thinking about your alignment here. So the right knee stays about over the right ankle, and your knee is kind of tracking the second and the third toe. So now we just want to avoid sinking into the hips. It doesn't need to be a huge stretch. You could even bring your knee in, your left knee, back knee, so it's underneath the left hip and you're still going to get this stretch. It's really making it work for your body. So when you get here, just lift up and out of the pelvis. Try and visualize your hips facing forward. Keep the torso long, tailbone drawing down, lift it through the crown of the head. And that's it. And you can just stay here for as however long feels good. And it can be nice to have a little bit of movement as well just rocking slightly back and forth around the hip flexor. And although this is to release the hips, there's lots of options you can take with the upper body. You could interlace, add a bit of a chest opener. You could add a side stretch, cactus arms. There's loads that you could do here. Let's try it on the other side and we'll think about some options for vocalizing. So as with all of my stretches for singers videos, I feel like I'm often repeating myself. If you add vocalizing to a stretch, just do what feels good for you. As I said before, we hold a bit of kind of emotional tension in our hips at times. So it's nice to have a lower, more lamenting sound, some humming, mm -hmm. feeling like you're sending the vibration, sending the sound to your hip. Whoa. Something low, a whoa, can feel really good at the beginning as well. 
And again, if you have a bit of movement, you can uh, make the voice move as well. Whoa. Probably sounds a bit weird at first, but once you try it, I assure you it can feel great. <laughs> so give it a go, see how it feels for you. As I say, it's got to work for your body, work for your voice. So just try it, add it into your singing warm up, and see how it feels for you. Let me know if you've got any questions and thanks for watching Stretches for Singers.